All right, so let's look at surface tension. Um, first things first, definition, please take down. What surface tension? Um, definition, I said, surface tension is simply the force that acts on the surface of liquids or fluid, making it to behave like an elastic stretched skin. That's all. Now, look up, please. Let me show you how this happens in real life. If you have a tap, look up, please. If you have a tap like this, um, so this is a tap. Because, uh, so you have this. All right. Um, you are to fetch water from this tap. Of course, you switch on the tap and water comes out. When you're done, you switch off the tap. What do you observe? Observe that there will be water here. Abby? Yes. But observe that the small droplet of water here does not fall. Does it? No. You see, you see water, um, small drops of water here. It doesn't fall. This one becomes bigger and bigger until what happens there now? It falls. If you've, if you've observed this, this before. You see water here. It will just be there small. It gets bigger and bigger until it finally falls. The question is this. Why is it I have water here? Why is that this water did not fall? What was keeping this water here from falling? That's the question. How come I have water that is upside down? I think the same thing happens to depends on uh, what you're using. If you have containers, you pour water. At the end, check it out. There will be that drop that will be there. It will not fall. It just stay there. becomes bigger and bigger before it drops. Now the question is this. When this water droplet was like this, why did it fall out initially? Why does it have to get big and big before it falls? What was holding this water droplet from falling before? The force that was holding this is called what there? Surface what there? Tension. So surface tension actually acts on this point here, making it um, not to fall. Now, why does it finally fall? The idea is simple. When it gets bigger and bigger, it becomes weightier and weightier. So as this um, droplet gets bigger, the weight becomes too much for the surface tension to hold it. Hence, it will now fall. That's the idea. And that's why also to prove the concept of surface tension, there are insects that work on water, true? Yes. How come some insects, if you observe very well, insects like ants can work on water? Is there something holding it? Yes. What's that? Surface tension. So surface tension is like the concept that explains the reason why some insect can actually walk on water. So it's surface tension. That's like um, the idea. So that's your science definition. Let's now look at scientific definition. Please take that, please. Stop it in. Coefficient of surface tension. Coefficient of surface tension. Coefficient of surface tension. Um, your symbol for this is gamma. All right. Viscosity is eta. Surface tension is gamma. Don't forget. Take that, please. Take that, please. Um, notice, please. Note this. Your coefficient of viscosity is like what's it called? Your mathematical expression for viscosity, please. Take down. It is simply the force acting per unit length of a fluid. That's it. It is simply the force acting per unit length of a fluid. Coefficient of surface tension is simply the force acting per unit length of a fluid. That's it. So look up, please. Let's now use the mathematical um, expression. So mathematically, surface tension eta is equal to, we said, force per unit length. So it becomes force all over length. We're saying that eta, sorry, gamma, is equal to F all over L. Take this as your first equation. All right. From here, let's make um, F subject of the formula. So I have um, this is equal to F all over L. This is over 1. So I'm doing this times this. So force is equal to this times this, um, this L. So I call this equation 2. So it's just a simple cross multiplication. Force becomes gamma times L. So force is equal to surface tension times length. Um, let me give you another concept again. 
in science we do hypothesis which i believe you have an idea of hypothesis what's a hypothesis what's, hypo what's hypothesis huh sorry it's not just an explanation it's a reasonable explanation for an observed phenomenon very important please if, it is, if you're defining um, hypothesis, you define hypothesis as what? Not just an explanation, but what there? Eh? A reasonable explanation. When Newton was getting the idea of gravity, right, the story was simple. That he was under, they said it's apple tree. That the apple fell on his head, right? If Newton was a Nigerian, he would have said his village people. Now that's it. Now that's an explanation, but it is not reasonable. That's it. It's not reasonable. So when it comes to the idea of hypothesis, you don't just say anything. You say reasonable things. In this case of surface tension here, we're going to do more of like an assumption. See, for surface tension, we mentioned fluid here, having this one here. Um, a droplet of water has what shape? Huh? Good. A droplet of water is spherical. That's in the 3D format. True? In the 2D sense, in two dimensions, what will it be? What will it be? Do you know between 3D and 2D? 3D is cube. 2D becomes what there? Becomes what? 2D becomes what? Square. That's it. 3D, uh, here's it. Let me, let me, oh God, help me. All right. So this is, this is square. This is 2D. Y is flat. You can't see here. The 3D of um, square becomes a cube where we say all the sides are equal. So for a 3D um, whatever shape, I can see different sides of it. That's the concept of it. Water in 3D is what there? Is spherical in nature. In a 2D becomes what there? A circle. So it becomes circular. Alright. For a circle, look up please. Look up please. So here's the assumption please. If we are assuming this to be in a 2D format where um, the water droplet becomes a circle. For the length, L is equal to, please, the length becomes like, what's it called? Becomes the perimeter of a circle. Question, what's the perimeter of a circle? 2 pi r. So L is equal to 2 pi r. Please, Y, perimeter of a circle. I've told you how we got this. Right. That water droplet, which we use to consider surface tension, is spherical in 3D. In 2D, it becomes circular. If I'm talking about length, it becomes this perimeter of the circle. That becomes 2 pi r. So hence, if I put, if I put L into equation 1, what do I get? I have that F is equal to rho, um, sorry, gamma into what there? 2 pi r. Please multiply this. What do you have here? F is equal to what there? 2 pi r um, gamma. Sorry? Put, sorry, into equation 2. Thank you. Yeah, equation 2. Yes. It becomes this times length. So, um, so suppose we are saying gamma, please. We're not, listen. Whenever you're doing multiplication and you see number and whatever thing, please, the number always comes first. Very important, please. Whenever you're doing something like this, so you don't say, uh, what's it called? You don't say um, gamma 2 pi r. It's, it, is, it is not wrong, but it's not correct either. Okay, it is correct, but it's not proper. See, that's language. Please, whenever you're multiplying something with a number, the number comes outside. It's very important. Call this equation 3. All right, so we said the fluid will finally fall. We want to derive something. I'm taking my time to explain why each everything is the way it is. I'm taking my time to explain. So just listen. Next up, we said the fluid will finally fall down. Why? Because it becomes very massive. So the bigger it gets, the more the weight, and then the weight becomes bigger than surface tension. Hence, surface tension can no longer hold it and then to fall. So let's consider weight here. Recall something. Record that weight is equal to what there? Mass times what? Gravity. We have this. Also, with respect to density, 
how do you express mass? We said density is equal to what there? Mass over what? Volume. This is over 1. This times this, mass times 1. Mass is equal to what there? Density, volume. Um, perhaps, let me call this 4. So, if I put mass, put M into equation 4. What do I have there? I have that weight is equal to mass. We said mass is what? Density, volume. So it becomes mass times what again there? Gravity. So please, this becomes mass times gravity. So weight is equal to what there? Rho V G. Uh, what next? Call this equation 5. Right? Plenty, plenty equations. Uh, sometimes you derive up to equation 12. This is just equation 5. Sometimes you do up to equation 12. This was like one of the first things I actually found um, nice in quotes. Because I know in secondary school you don't really do derivation that much. But here you derive things. You don't just, you don't just give you formula. You should know how it comes about. Yeah, from the very scratch. From the very scratch of this. To all these things here. Yeah. Know how each step works. Alright, so I'm here then. We said something last week. We said, but that volume is equal to what there? Area times what there? Height. Abby, we established this last week. How? So that we're not there. How? We said volume is measured in what there? Meter cube. And we said meter cube is equal to meter square times what there? Meters. Meter square represents what there? Area. When you hear meter square, area comes to height. So it comes to mind times m. Meters height. So volume is equal to area times height. If I put if I put v into 5, what do I get there? I have that weight is equal to density into volume. Volume is area times height. So replace here by area times height. Finally, gravity. Alright. So I have this. So it means that weight is equal to rho a H G, if you want to. Yep. Rho A H G. All right. So I have this. But, but, um, we did something here. We said length was equal to 2 pi r. Why? Because we said a fluid in 3D format is a sphere, in 2D is a circle. So length became the perimeter of a circle. With this same concept, here now I'm looking at area. So, in the same vein, I'm still considering that fluid, which is what? A circle. So, the area of this fluid becomes what there? Area of what there? Circle. Which is what there? Pi root square. Alright. So, area of circle. If I put A, call this 6. If I put A into 6, what do I get? I have that weight is equal to rho times a. A is pi r squared. So that's a into h into g. So multiply all of this. It means that w is equal to um, pi r squared rho g h. That's all. Pi r squared rho g h. That's all. Call this uh, equation 7. At this point, I think you're almost done with it. You're almost done with it. So the idea is very simple. Um, surface tension is equal to force over length. So force is surface tension times length. Length is 2 pi r. That's for that side there. Second task, consider weight. That's mass times gravity. Mass is density volume. Volume is area height. Area is area of a circle, pi r squared. That's all. So at this point now, we are here. Force. Look up, please. Force is measured in what unit? Newton. Newton. Weight in what unit? Alright, so we can say force and weight are almost the same thing because they are Newton and Newton. So, hence, with that regard, we can say equate, equate this 7 and uh, where is it? And 3. So, I'll equate weight to force. The ideology here is that both of them are measured in Newton. So hence, if I do this now, 
this one here is what? Hi, this one here. R squared rho g h is equal to this one here is what? 2 pi r gamma. Please, can anything cancel here? Yes. Um, the, the idea is simple. In mathematical manipulations, if I have the same term on both sides of the equation, they can cancel out. That's the logic there. So hence, I can see pi and pi. So hence, both of them can cancel out. Also, I can see r squared and perhaps r. So that means one r here will cancel out one r here. So I'm left with r rho gh is equal to two gamma. So I have this list. So that's it. I'll just rush and giving you um, formula. But then you need to learn derivation, please. Master derivation. So I'm here. Well, let's push, please. We are done. Let's get hit here, please. How do you get hit here? I have R rho G what? H is equal to what there? Two gamma. Let's get H divided by what? Divide here by. All right. So this one will cancel this. So H is equal to two rho all over R rho G. This is the equation I was looking for. All right. All right, so I'm looking for this. Copy down. Let me give you a little bit of note on this. All right, so h is equal to what's h? That's the question. What's h? Height. Height of what? Height of what? The liquid. Height of liquid. Ah. Height of liquid. And that's all. That, that's, a, that's a better one, please. So h is h is equal to the height of liquid in a container, a test tube. What's the height of the liquid? Height of liquid in where? All right, so H means height. All right, if you are here, let's proceed. All right, take that, please. Note that given the angle of contact theta, note that given the angle of contact theta, in derivation, you don't cram, you understand. That's the best way. That's why I explained it for you. You don't have to cram, you don't have to cram. If you understand the whole concept, you get it. So F over L, mass. Gravity density that you manipulate it. Given the angle of contact theta, then H, then H is equal to 2 gamma all over R rho G cos theta. Please. Cos theta is optional. When do you use theta? When they specify angle of contact. If they don't specify angle of contact, there is no need. Of course, that please. All right, let's take an example on this and we solve together, please. Any question so far? All right, the question says when a capillary tube is dipped in a vessel of water, comma, the water rises what there? 5. Point what? 75 millimeters beyond the surface of the water in the vessel, full stop. The same tube is dipped into water. A similar vessel of what? Mercury. It says the mercury is what? Depressed below the outside level of the mercury in the vessel. Full stop. If the variation H in the levels of mercury is 0 0.2 centimeters, comma, calculate what? The surface tension in what? Mercury. Assume the surface tension of water to be what? 7.5 times 10 to the power what? Minus 4 Newton per meter. I even forgot, sir. We forgot to put in it there. What we said, surface tension, we said surface tension is equal to what there? Force over length. What's the unit? Newton per meter. All right. Angle of contact of what there? Mercury slash glass to be what? 130 degrees, comma. Densities of water and mercury to be what there? 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cube and 13.6 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cube, respectively. They said take G as what there? 9.8 meters 
per second square. All right, let's get that done, please. Solution. I've said your first tax in physics is to do what there? List out given parameters. Please check. What's the first thing you're giving there? Huh? Don't just tell me height. Height of what? Height of my camera, height of the board, my height. What height? They said when a capillary tube is dipped in what? A vessel of what? Water, comma. What rises? It's water. So because what there? The height of what? Water. Please. All right. Number one, please. Height of, please, write your own in full. I'll write in short to save time. Number one, please. Height of water, H. Please let me do one H2O, please, for water. All right. H of H2O. Height of water. H of H2O. All right. It means, so write yours in full. Solution number one given. Height of water, comma, H, H2O. Equal to, how many there? Five point, please, it's not 5.75. It's 5 point what? 75. Please take note. In science, if you're calling decimal figures, after decimal points, code numbers what there? One after the other. So hence, you don't pronounce this as 2.23. No, it's 2.23. If this is as long as infinity, this is pronounced as 2.2. 2376 After this map point, you call the numbers what there? One after the other till the end. Please. Alright, so we have this. Um, next up, it says beyond the surface of the water in the vessel, full stop. They said the same tube is dipped into a similar vessel of mercury. It says the, the mercury is depressed below the outside level. Okay. Um of the mercury in the vessel, full stop. If the variation H, now look up please now, they're giving you a second H. If the variation H in the levels of mercury is what? So that's what there, H of what? Mercury. What's the chemical symbol of mercury? HG, good. So I'm saying H of HG. So number two, height of mercury, HHG, is equal to, the value there is uh, what? 0.2 cm. All right. So see the way I'm picking up parameters. Picking up parameters. Now it says calculate the surface tension of what? Of what? So you know what I'm looking for. Surface tension is what symbol there? This of mercury is equal to unknown. Calculate the surface tension of mercury. Continue. It says what there? Assume the surface tension of water. So number three, I'm giving surface tension this of H2O. How many there? All right. So I'm giving surface tension of of um, water to be 7.5 times 10 to the power minus 4 newton per meter. What again is there? Angle of what? Contact of what? So they gave you theta for what there? Mercury. So number four, angle of contact of mercury. Theta mercury is equal to how many there? 130 degrees. 130 degrees. What's the next thing you have there? Density of water. How many? 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cube. What else do you have again there? Density of mercury equal to how many? 13.6 times 10 to the power what there? 3 kilogram per meter cube. Number 6, 7, they say G to be equal to what there? 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. With this, I have successfully listed out all the parameters in that question. Please check. Is there any parameter that I have not listed? Please check. No. All right. So I've listed everything successfully. So what's next? 
Look up, please. What's next? Look up. Look up, please. Please give me formula again, please. We said H is equal to what? Yeah? 2 all over Abby? Then we said cos theta is what? Optional. Another reason why you should always list that parameter is that it gives you an idea of what you're looking for and what formula to use. For instance, I have this, I know this formula here, this one here. In the question, look up please. In the question, we have to find the surface tension of what? Mercury. So look up please, look up. So this is, this is my surface tension here. Let's make surface tension subject of the formula. This becomes all over one. So I'm having this times one, it becomes two times surface tension is equal to this time, this gives you H G, sorry, H rho G R, or pass, rho G R H, better still, right, rho G R times H, so better still, divided by two, divided by two, so I have this. So in other words, if I want, look up please, in other words, if I'm asked to find surface tension for mercury, I need the following. Number one, I need density of mercury. Please check, is it giving that question there? Yes, so this one is no, not a problem. I need gravity. Please check. Is it given there? Yeah. Not a problem. Okay. I need height. Please check. For mercury, is it given there? Yeah. Yes. Of course, two is a constant. I also need radius of mercury. Please check. Is it given there? Yeah. So that means the equation is quite simple. If I want to find surface tension of mercury, I only need to do this here. Yeah? And for all of this, I'm given one, two, three, four. I'm not given radius. So my task now will be how do I get the radius of what there? Mercury. That's all. Of course, if I can get a value for radius of mercury, I'll put it here and get my final answer. That's it. So, question. How do I get radius of the mercury? That's the question. Now, look up, please. Just like you were saying something about capillary to something. Look up, please. Um, let me show you something the question, please. Check your question. Okay, don't worry. Let me not use this. They said a capillary tube. Usually, a capillary tube looks like this. Look up, please. A capillary tube looks like this. Um, or perhaps just a tube. I have this. Or whatever. So look up, please. Uh, we said this capillary tube was dipped in water. If I dip this in water here, what do you observe? The water will raise, or the water level will rise up to, let's say this is the height of water. So I'm calling this height of H2O. Height of water equal to um, 5.75, I have this. This same capillary tube, look up please. This same capillary tube was dipped into mercury. Let's make an assumption here. So let's say I dip this first into water. Water was somewhere from here to here. Question, if I have a capillary tube, look up please. If I have a capillary tube that has what I need, and then I pour in mercury, question, with mercury and water, would they mix? Would they mix together? They won't mix. Now, here's a simple analogy. Here, here's just what you need to know. If I have mercury and water, let me let me show this one here to show you mercury. If I have mercury and water in the same capillary tube, the idea is simple. For the same capillary tube here, yeah, it means that from here, if I have let's say a droplet of mercury as being this, of course they won't mix. If I also have a droplet of water as being this, the simple idea is this, that my mercury, which is this, and my water, which is this, will have the same diameter. Why? Because they are in the same kind of capillary tube. So it means that for this one here, the diameter of mercury is equal to what there? Diameter of what? Water. If the diameters are the same thing, it also means that the radius of what? Mercury is also equal to what there? Radius of what? Water. This is just a simple concept you need. So for this question, the idea is simple. That the diameter of mercury in the same capillary tube should be equal to diameter of water. And in the same vein, the radius of mercury will be equal to radius of water. Now hold on. This was for mercury. Let's come back to water, please. Look at me. Let's come back to water, please. Please check. Am I giving surface tension for water here? Yes. 
Yes. Am I giving this the water here? Yes. Gravity, am I giving there? Yes. Am I giving H there? Yes. So that means, look up, please. That means if I'm giving all of this here, my cast will be this. I will express this equation in terms of water such that since one, two, three, four are given, I will simply do what there? Find the what? Radius of what? Water. When I get this radius of water here, we said from this that what? Radius of what? Water is equal to what? Radius of what? Mercury. Then from here, I will now get radius of mercury. Put it back into this equation and you've solved it. That's it. Is it clear? Or is it too long? Which of them? Clear or too long? Take down. Take down, please. Recall that. Take down. Recall. Recall that H is equal to 2 this all over rho gr. Look up, please. For water. Oh, please, hang on. Hang on. We forgot something. We forgot something. Um, when you're given a question, your first task is to do what there? List that parameter. Your second task is to ensure uniformity of given parametric units. What am I saying? Make sure all the parameters are the same. What does it mean in simple language? Convert. Convert. In this question, am I converting? Yes or no? Yes. Why am I converting? Um, usually, when you ask somebody in junior science, why am I converting? They say, because H is in millimeter. H should not be in millimeter. That's not true. H can be in millimeter. Why am I converting here? The reason why I'm converting here is because I have millimeter what there, centimeter what again there, meter. I must have the same unit. So that's why I'm converting. So hence, if this was millimeter, 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 I don't need to convert. All right. Please convert this, please. Am I multiplying or dividing? By what there? All right. So it becomes 5.75 times the power what there? Minus 3 meters. Please to convert. You say divide by 1,000 or multiply by what there? 10 to the power what? Minus 3. That's how you convert. All right. Also, I'll convert this, please. Converting this, man, what do you do here? By how many? So it becomes 0 0.2 times 10 to the power what there? Minus 2 in meters. Please, to so convert from millimeters to meters, 10 to the power minus 3. From centimeters to meters, 10 to the power minus 2. That's all. All right. For water, now what do we get there? This becomes H of H2O water is equal to 2 times this one here, surface tension of water all over this one here, density of water times this one here, gravity. Please, is it gravity or gravity of water? Gravity. gravity. Times what there? Please, gravity is gravity. It's not like gravity of water. It's the same thing. It's constant. If I impute values, this value is what there? This 5.75 times 10 to the power minus 3 is equal to 2 times um, surface tension of water. That's this one here. That becomes 7.5 times 10 to the power what there? Minus 4 all over density of water. How many there? 10 to the power 3 into gravity 9.8 into what there? Out of what? H2O. So I have this. Alright, let's do some punching, please. Please give me final numerator. What do you get? This becomes, this becomes, um, hold up, please. Hold up, please. Um, depends on how you want to tackle this. Uh, you can say, of course, cross multiply. Fine. Let's cross multiply, please. So we'll save time. So this times all of this. Is that okay, please? So this times all of this. I'm cross multiplying now. This times all of this. So it becomes, um, let me save time, please. Give me final answer, please. Multiply this one with all of this. What do you have? 5.75 times 10 to the power 3 minus 3, please. Times 
1000 times 9.8. What's the answer, please? All right. 56.35. Then what again there? Aru H2O is equal to this times this. What do you get there? 1.5 times what? Minus 3. Please confirm this answer, please. It's correct. All right. So how do you get Aru H2O? Divide here by what? 56.35. Since you are confirming the answer, let me drop my phone. All right. So divide here by 56.35. This will cancel this. So Aru H2O is equal to what do you get? See, I'm having different answers now. Oh, tell me one. Someone tell me this. What do you have, please? 2.66 times 10 to the power minus 5. What will be the unit? It's radius. So it becomes what? There? Meters. All right. But our assumption was that what? There? Radius of what? Water is equal to what? Radius of mercury. So this was our assumption. So with this one here, it's easy to say that radius of mercury is equal to what? 2.66 times 10 to the power minus 5 meters. I told you why this was so earlier. We've done for water. Let's now do for mercury. So for mercury, for mercury, please, what's this, please? What's this, please? For mercury, I have that, the same formula, H of mercury, so H of mercury is equal to 2 surface tension of mercury, it becomes 2 times surface tension of mercury, all over density of mercury, so rho of mercury times gravity, times what there? Eh? R of what? Mercury. But please observe, they give you what there? Theta for what there? Mercury. So it becomes what? Cos theta. Cos theta mercury. Please know I'm putting cos theta mercury. In water, there was no cos theta water. Abby? Why? Why? It was not given. No, see, it's not that I'm not looking for it. It's that I was not given. I've said the idea of putting cos theta is optional. If, you, if they give you theta, angle of contact, use it. If they don't give you, don't use it. In this case, I was given the one for only mercury. So I'll use it for just mercury, not water. That's the idea. All right. Um, impute values, please. So hold on, hold on. How do we go about this? We are asked to find surface tension of mercury, this one here. So perhaps, let's make this one here subject of the formula first. So it becomes all over one. So it becomes this one here times one. That gives you two surface tension of mercury times what there? Cos theta mercury is equal to this and this density of mercury times gravity times radius of mercury times what again there? Height of mercury. Please understand what I'm doing, please. This all of this times one is itself. So hence, it means that for me to get this value, I will divide here by what? 2 cos theta mercury. Divide here by 2 cos theta mercury. So this will cancel this. This will cancel this. So I can now get surface tension of mercury. All right. So we have surface tension of mercury to be equal to. Please, I've cleaned the values. Please give me values again, please. I've cleaned this one, please. This was what? 13.6, Abby. Please help me give me values again, please. This was what, there? Uh, hang on. 13.6 times 10 to the power, what, there? 3. Okay. Gravity there was what? Okay. So. 9.8. Next up, radius of mercury, which we had here as what? 2.66 uh -huh. times 10 to the power there, minus 5. Okay. 
Next up, H of mercury. Please check. What was the value there? Sorry? 2 times 10 to the power. Minus 3. Uh, it's the same thing now, right? Hold on, it's the same thing now. If, if you say 2 times 10 to the power minus 3 and 0 0.2 times 10 to the power minus 3, the same thing. All right, but don't, don't, let's use what we had there. 0 0.2 times 10 to the power there. Minus 2. Okay? All over 2 cos, what's theta mercury? 130. Please punch out numerator only. What's your final answer, please? Numerator only. What's your final answer, please? All of this stuff there. 7.09 times 10 to the power what there? Minus 2 or 3? 3. Okay. All over, what do you have here? 2 cos 130. What do you have? Sorry? Minus 1 point 28. Give me 3 dp. 286. Yes. So, why are you having the. Please check. Your calculator is not in Z. Listen. Listen. And that's why I said you should be pointing. Look up. In your calculator, calculator has three modes D, R, G. One is D, degree. One is R. So that means that one means range. Then you have G. Check. Yours is in R or G. Check. It's in R. That's why. Do you know how to reset it? So reset it to D. Please, all, listen. Listen. Always know this thing when you're, when you're going to, to your exam. All right. I've seen people make this mistake before. They go to, to, to hall with calculator as in R. You will not get the answer. So you're punching something correct, giving you a wrong answer. So please always make sure you're what you're what there. Calculators in what degrees, please. Do you have the answer now? Have you resetted? Chief. Have you resetted? So punch, what do you have? All right. Look up, please. Oh yeah, give me final answer. What do you have? Minus minus five point. Minus five point five. 1 minus 3. Please, R should be what? Uh, this should be what there? This one here? No, 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 no. Me too, what? It's not, it's not pi, it's pair. You know, we are saying pi, you came today. I'm saying pi, came today. Last week, I told them why it's pair, not pi. I told them. Now, listen. 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 Listen, is it possible for surface tension to be negative? Because we have, we have a negative value here. So, is it possible for surface tension to be negative? That's the question. Yes or no? Yes or no? Why? All right, so look up. Look up. Look up. Let me show some, please. Look at that question again. Look up, please. Um, sorry. Now listen, listen. Look at the question again, please. It says when a capillary tube is dipped, is dipped in a vessel of water, comma, the water rises 5.75 beyond. Now listen. When it was in water, what happened to, what happened to it there? It did what? Eh? It rises. Okay, continue. Now it says beyond the surface of water in the vessel. Okay, the same tube is dipped into what there? A similar vessel of mercury. What happened to it there? It said, it said what, what happened to it there? The what? It did what there? Depressed. So listen. 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 I purposely omitted this to show you something. Alright? If you're solving this question and it said the um, water level depressed, what does it mean? It means that H is equal to 0 0.2 times in the power minus 2 meters as we said. But in this case, it's a depression. So it becomes what there? Negative. Please don't forget, please. It becomes negative. So look up, please. In other words, if I put this negative here to show depression, this value here, Hg, becomes this here. It becomes what there? Negative. This one becomes what there? Negative and cancels out. So R Hg. Sorry, rule. So rule Hg is equal to what there? 
5.51 times 10 to the power of that minus 3 newton per meter. Please hope you don't forget this, please. All right? Don't forget, please. What am I using H there? What am I using negative there? Depressed. Depressed. The first one says rises positive. I'm going to say depressed. Negative. That's it. All right, so that's how you solve this question, please.